right, let's do this thing. Whew, late as hell. Damn, yo, what the fuck? Yo, what is up? Hey, what's up, bro? How you doing, man? Doing well. A little late. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All good. Don't worry about it, bro. It's good to see you, man. You too. How you been? Good. You, good. I'm good and I'm bro. not late on purpose right now. I know that might be a thing that maybe was thought, you know? I mean, bro, you're a dad, dog, I, you, know? you know? So it's when you're a parent, you know, it's, anything could happen. Tough to get out of the house. What's good, though? Not much, yo, chilling. How you been? I'm good, man. man it's good to see you at a, it's good to see you in front of some vegan lunch here. My boy, who's, uh, you know, Nick. Oh, yeah, that's your guy, right? You know, um, I was there the day he became vegetarian. By the way, just so everyone knows, like I, whoever's watching here, this is Nick's on Beverly. Me and Nick are partners, and Ben's got some really dope history with Nick here. I don't know, I'm excited to hear, you know? Like, yeah, like 94, 95-ish, one day, yeah. we went from eating steaks and eating, you know, he owned a Jamaican restaurant, and one day he just said, Damn, hey. they had a Jamaican spot? Yeah, they had a Jamaican what? spot. Nick said one day, he goes, <laughs> something just hit him, and he said, I don't want to have meat anymore. Dope. So... Uh, became vegetarian. Yeah, yeah. And was eating like bean and cheese burritos and, you know, like, like black beans and rice and whatever and blah, yeah, blah. Yeah, yeah. Then I guess he was trying to figure out, you know, protein and certain things, whatever. And then I remember we were in Las Vegas at Sears Palace and he had like, I forgot what he had, some kind of beans, whatever, but he, then there was pork stock in there. And he got all dramatic. Anyways, all that happened. And then like, I want to say circa maybe 2000. 2001 dope vegan and then my wife sort of stopped eating meat became a pescatarian like around 2003 ish dope. i did 10 months of, ve of vegan okay and then i remember nick just knew so much he wasn't yeah, a jerk yeah. about it he was like hey look my personal assistant has been a vegan for 13 14 years yeah yeah and nick was like hey just to let you know um that candy's not vegan i was like come on bro yeah and then he said something else too. He was like, hey, just so you know, how much wine does your wife drink? And I was like, she drinks a glass a day. You know, my wife yeah, says, yeah. I have a wine drinker, you drink wine. And she's he's like, a very high number, like 95% of wines aren't vegan. And I was yep. like, bro, they're grapes. And he goes, no, it's the, he goes, the bone that they use to cut the grapes is an animal bone, blah, blah, whatever. I was like, come on, dog. Crazy. That's really in depth. I don't go that deep into the vegan thing. Yeah. You know, he was just breaking down. He goes, yo, my kids are going to be raised vegan. And I was like, yeah. you're tripping. That's. But yeah, so you know, he, he was he was the first guy that that kind of like put it in there, and you see the people who are just like, they get so crazy, like, can't have leather seats in their car, yeah, it's blah tough, blah. Yo, and I'm it's like, tough, all right, dog. It's tough. It's tough. All right, bro. No, it's crazy. Like, it's cool hearing about even like Nick back in the day because I just know him from this past like you know five years or whatever. So I know like the older Nick. We have kids is the same age as well, and so it's dope. Like you told me this one story one time. Like I think you guys were growing up when you were younger. You're chilling at Nick's house. Nick's family's like crazy in the game. As legendary as you can be. As in legendary the game. as you can be, yeah, yeah. His pops and him, everything. It is brother too, right? I mean, his brother. They did that that song that I listened to all throughout middle school. Like it was the shit. Anyways, what was the story like? You guys broke a lamp, or you almost broke a lamp. It belonged to somebody. Was there like Beatles involved? I don't know. What was the fuck was it like? Me and Nick. Nick lived at uh, his dad's studio, which is in Malibu, overlooking the ocean. Gorgeous. Fuck. Two hundred forty degree view of, of the Pacific Ocean, and um, so indoor specific? basketball court. <laughs> studio had two bedrooms one mine one nick a uh, little mini gym but just a view and everything and then you go upstairs there's an outdoor basketball court with the view of the water then there's a Man. pool then there's, then there's then there's lou's office and we were just throwing shit around and i came like this close to like i grazed this like i'm not sure if it's smearing off vodka or maybe it was uh stole it was, but it was a vodka bottle yeah yeah and it was like a weird thing and it had it was made of a lamp and I've always wondered what it was because it didn't make any sense. And on the, on the lamp, it had these two eyes, like round glasses. Yeah, yeah. If you, if you ask anybody that's over 45 or 50 years of age, and you say, if I draw like some glasses, I'd be like, who do those glasses remind you of? Just, if I just they draw know. literally, they'll just think of John Lennon. Okay. Oh, is it John Lennon? So John Lennon, you know, legendary. Apparently, Lou let him borrow his apartment one night. Yeah. John just did a bunch of coke, went crazy. <laughs> destroyed his whole fucking house. Yeah. There was never a time that John Lennon was not alive and wasn't the biggest rock star in the world because the Beatles, right? 100%. Destroyed the place. And then he wrote with the marker on the lamp to Lou, in damage done, John Lennon autographed it and did a thing. So crazy. You no, know, it was just like, it was crazy. So his dad's like, you know. And you almost broke that. Yeah. Yeah. That's like, you know, <laughs> so like, the yeah. level, 
you know, craziness. Yeah, no, that's like, that's true history. Yeah. You know, that's crazy. See, so you got the mummy dunks on today. Yeah. The slight flex, we were all talking about them earlier. No, man, I'm just trying to, They're nice, man, they're nice, they're nice. You are the SB guy, though. People don't know that. Are you serious? It's funny. This is how disconnected the sneaker world is now. Yeah. They've, it's gotten too young, no one knows, like. Okay, what was your most impressive moment SB history? I mean, I've heard some crazy stories, right? I don't know. I think you guys were like the first to go and buy out like entire stores. And I feel like that kind of changed with, the like, game. We started with like Southern California, all the way to San Diego. And then that wasn't good enough, I got greedy. So Would I hit the East the Bay. outlets too? Like, no. Because we, we used to call outlets. outlets. We'd be like, hey, back, you guys Way, way, way dunk? back then, outlets weren't getting like, by the way, I'm sorry. After all the craze, mm -hmm. SBs have dropped. I've cleared out all the stock. No one can buy them. Yeah. Richard Mulder's pulled up oh. at the outlets at Cabazon. The white and um, with the blue swoosh. Remember too, though, back then, mm. there was three Nike, Nike outlets in the entire world. Damn, what were they? So that was, there was one in uh, Cabazon. Okay. There was one way out in the East Coast. Yeah. And there might have been one, like, in, you know, in was like Was it the one Portland. in Leesburg? I don't know. We had one growing up in Leesburg, Virginia from like 2003 till now, you know? It was probably like right around there. Yeah, so yeah. it was weird. Even a few pair of Reese Forbes, which was the coveted SB at that time. You're talking about the Hunters or the, the Wheat? The original Wheat. Original oh, the OG. Denims. No, 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 the Wheat. The, the wheat. first, okay, the first okay, pair. Okay. There was four pairs, the Gino Iannucci, yeah. Danny Supa, Reese Forbes, and Richard Mulder. Yep. Those are the four. The thing was, Danny Supas and the Genos weren't sent in the same allotments because those are two uh, New York skaters. Genos with chocolate, Danny Supas with, with, uh, with, with Supreme, whatever. Man, chocolate days, and, um, dude. Yeah, so went to Portland, went to all these places, and then I got on the radar. And then obviously, you know, later on, jumping on as one of the really, really early influencers at Nike, becoming a... Uh, a guy like that, meaning Jesse Leva, meaning Sandy Bodeker. And I just think that um, we had such a love-hate relationship, and I'm sure you know what that is like, you know, where, like, you know, I'm sick of this shit. I'm going to do what I want. But what's funny is I was eating at a at a vegan restaurant. Not vegan, but, like, a, a, a similar vegan restaurant. Yeah, whatever, yeah. At least a, and it was all vegan food, and Chase had taken me there. And it was, a, um, it was an og dinner. Okay. So, you know, all og. Yeah. So Bari shows up. About to go to a huge V-Loan party, drop and everything. And he sees the chef, and boom, the chef's the owner. And he goes, yo, this is my dude, Ben Baller, you know, blah, blah, whatever. And, and you know, he's happy that he knows her. Yeah, and yeah. it's a really obscure, like, cool boutique type spot, like, for food and vegan food. Yeah. And she goes like this, and she stops. And she's like, I've known this man since 2002. I was the head cook at Blue House, and Ben ran the Blue House. Blue House! Tell him what the fuck Blue House is. Yeah. Please so, tell him what the fuck Blue House Babari is. But Bari right then man. and there thought that I was just a jeweler. Yeah. In a Rolls Royce or a Lamborghini or anything, and Bari stopped and he said he was kind of bummed out because I don't think he wanted me to be that okay, cool. Okay, I see you, yeah. And Bari's like, yo, you was around this? I was like, around? That was mine. I started that. That was me. And he goes, he, it, 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 it fucked him up so bad yeah. that it had to put me on a different level of pedestal because he knew I was a troll. He knew I talked shit. He knew I was yeah, cocky, yeah. <laughs> brash, but had all the accolades to pass it. He, and I was like, the fact that you even know what that is yeah. is great. Yeah. And even the fact that you knew what it was. So, you know, the, the, the Nike Blue House was an energy slash influencer Venice marketing Beach. home. Yeah, it was, it was Jim Morrison's estate. It was Jim Morrison's place. Really? Yeah, Venice Damn. Beach. Damn, okay. So yeah, you know, Nike bought this place. We created it to have events, not parties. I, I remember mm -hmm. made the mistake on Nike Talk posting party. I would hire sneaker heads. I would have bring guys from all over the place. Even Andre, like Croatian style, he was small time yeah. in the game, whatever, boom. We did like the history of you know, all Nike basketball, bringing the Blazers back, Terminators, everything. This is like, you know, really, like, really early like, on. Did Nike, Nike invited artists to do rooms, right? Because I had a cause piece. Remember that one I showed yeah. you? It was cut out the yeah, wall. We had cause, and we so had Jeff Mephedridge there. Todd um, Reese. Yeah, there was a lot of people that we had there. Yeah, yeah, There was yeah. a lot of cool artists. Uh, there was a guy named uh, Aaron Rose. Okay. He's, uh, he curated the whole thing, and he's always, he's tied in with all the big artists. Yeah, yeah, dope, dope. I mean, Aaron Rose would do this, like these crazy art galleries in there. He's like, hey, you want to buy one of these? And I was like, eh. at the time, fifteen hundred was kind of a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather put it in shoes. Yep. There's was an artist by the name of Banksy. Yeah. So this Did girl I know, Jill, bought one. She used to work at Undefeated at Union. Well, yeah, she, yeah. I helped out with Undefeated business like before that. So Union Susie. Yep. She bought a couple of paintings. I think she spent maybe three, four thousand dollars max. And I was like, whoa. Flash forward, 
yeah. you know, 2010 or 2011, uh, $3,000 turned into like two and a half million dollars. It's insane. It's nuts. Probably Fuck. more now too. I mean, even looking back at pictures of that place, it was crazy. Like, caused it entire walls, dude. Yeah, yeah, no, And was it, it just destroyed, right? They yeah. did demolish the place. Yeah. Like fucking crazy art, yeah. just like destroyed. There was paintings in there that were, that were sick and I have like famous photographers. You can't even really Google it and find that much about it. You mm -hmm. really can't, yo, it's crazy. It was never promoted. Okay, that makes sense. We brought an artist named Espo. I love Steve Powers, say no fucking more, dude. God, I love Espo, holy shit. So we launched the Espo Air Force Two there. Really? We launched it there. Yo, I've got 23 pairs of Espos, dude. We had Espo do the, do some show, he did a show there. Man. We launched a safari for the second time ever, you know, the first time came out in the yeah. retro. We had Bismarcky come out, DJ the party. And this is all on Venice Beach, in a house. Like, yeah. this is so sick, dude. Like, that it's is- It's pretty crazy. We had, a, really we had an crazy. amazing chef. I mean, even speaking about Espo, is like, I, I'm pretty good, like, you know, internet friends with, with Espo and shit. Right. And it's like, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to do an Adidas project with him actually really bad. You know, his history is very Nike. So I think it'd be so cool to see Adidas through his lens. You know what I mean? It'd be dope. The smallest. But a very nice guy, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I can only imagine. But we, we, we had so many different crazy things there. Damn. We had a... Did you guys release those FCs there? It was like a FC, maybe it was a SBFC. I think it was before they started doing FCs under the SB realm, but it was with like uh, some artists from Paris, maybe. There was like an all orange pair. There was like a silver we didn't. pair. We released the laser. Okay, oh, the laser. So it was a Mark Air Force One laser, yeah. Kobe laser. These were yeah. really, really rare shoes. Yeah. Some dude tagged me in a picture. Yeah. It was a trip that this dude went that far back because it was, you know, you think about a straight blank Air Force One. Yeah. And it's lasered, it was like a big deal. Plus on top of that, we had the crazy gift bags. We did a movie night there. We did so many things so, like, there. Do you think it's still possible for us to do shit like this in, in like today's fucking sneaker no. climate? Because this is what, things like that is what I'm always Reason pushing why towards. Is, like my project with Adidas, everything. I'm like, I'm always like, like a movie night. You know how many times I've thought of a movie night and I'm song. like. At the Blue House, people listened. Yeah. Phones didn't have cameras on them that worked that Man, good. Man, you're so right. If we were to do that, we'd have to have everyone's phone put in those little Ziploc, you know, right. not the things, those, those like, no, you're right. like Kanye uses and stuff. Yep. And you'd be like, hey, listen, I'm gonna hire Nick to cater the food. I want you guys to experience this. Yeah. Let's do a movie, do gift bags, do certain things. You think people appreciate it as much now? Oh, hell yeah, bro. Okay. It's, it's, just, yeah, it's, just, yeah. it's just the fact that they'd be bummed that they couldn't ex talk about it. You can talk about it after. Yeah, yeah. This is even sad to think about. I wanna know what it feels like to go to an event and not feel the need to pull out my phone and record it no. and upload something when I leave. Man, bro, like, what? Our events were on like Thursday night, you know, certain nights. Yeah. During the day, we're there for a few hours. Meetings coming around. There was a guy named Drew Greer, who was head of Nike at the time, energy marketing, and um, let's go Dar Levon. And we're there chilling. And it was like maybe 1.30. Mm -hmm. the, the Nike headquarters offices were like in Santa Monica, like Mino Mar Duray area. I decided to get there early. I pull up, there's nobody there. I'm looking around, Shep ain't there, Lisa's not there, nobody's yeah. there. And I'm just sitting there and I walk around. It's not like you could Google people's pictures back then. Yeah. It's tougher in 2003, 2002. True. So, you know, I pull up, go to the side house, I see Drew talking to some dude. And they're talking, blah, blah, whatever. Drew Greer designed the Mushroom Air Force One, which is a coveted, oh, like very yeah, rare color. Love that. Drew's talking to this random ass white dude. Another random white dude walks out. And Drew's like, hey man, this is like our head influencer dude. He's the man, he like controls all the like, you know, the kids. He's, yeah, he's yeah. like the Pied Piper for da da da, this, that, whatever. First guy goes, hey, how you doing? I'm Tinker, what's your name? Boom. And I'm sitting like this, I was like. Damn. One, definitely not gonna lie about that name. You know what I'm saying? Look where we are, 100%. boom. 100%, yeah, no, nah, crazy. Number two, the guy walks over and goes, hey, how you doing, Mark Parker? What? President of Nike, and I'm like, holy Damn. shit. Damn. Right? Damn. We had some really great events there, man. Man, it's sick. Once I found out about it, I've been constantly chasing, trying to recreate whatever moments you guys had there. You know what I mean? It I'm was. Knife, sorry. Go for it, yeah. It was. It was like. It just seems like super inspiring for like this generation of us who weren't able to be there, dude. Well, it's you like, know, I you wish have that. I think in a similar way. Let's just say, for instance, we did that, right? And you had some food mm -hmm. and certain shit. Imagine if we had Adidas night. I know. Then this, this, and this. Yep. Then they gave you some budget, right? Yep. Like. I mean, I pitched crazy fucking ideas for no, it. No, I know, it's I'm like just saying all things. that kind of shit, dude, exactly. There was always food. Yep. It was always healthy. There was always like the best, like whatever, like Voss water and things like yeah, that. It was, yeah. it was just really clean and cool. And they just always had events. 
and they wanted people to come there and get energy, you know what I'm saying, yep. and get that. Yep. How do and we think, give think, our consumers this energy? I don't think, I think it's so you know? easy for you to do, I just think it's yeah. them giving a green light to, to finance, yeah, that's yeah. all. Yeah, yeah, it's just the, it's the constant push, and like I can feel like it's really dope, Adidas is very community driven, you know what I mean? They've been like super great to work with on like, uh, organic products, sustainability, vegan products and stuff. So it's kind of cool. Like, I think in the future, we're going to get really close to that blue house vibe. You know what I mean? Of really bringing back like just a, a space for the community by Adidas or whatever it is, you know, the world's kind of reverting back to the time that we were at then where there's so much, cre so many creatives right now. There's so many people with insane ideas. We have access to so much information and stuff. And so, I feel like the world's ready to to like kill it. And so we just need to like offer these platforms. You the know? best part about that was yeah. Cause was nowhere near what he is now. Yeah, true. There are talented artists out there. Yep. That you may know of. 100%. Heard of designers. Yep. Those Imagine the them all in the room to, together. Exactly, because then someone will be having this conversation in 10 years, they'll be like, yo, remember the Adidas greenhouse, wherever the fuck, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because I do have a ton of friends who are artists right now and I see their work like, their work goes for more every month. I'm like, damn, I'm like, someone just bought a piece of yours for this How about amount? the 15 year old kid who's the intern that's at your whatever? Yeah. I'm just saying, someone no, like Lil that. No, Julian, yeah, he's the man, yo. He works for us now, he's on, he's getting paychecks now, it's crazy. What yo. I'm saying like, is, imagine yeah, him yeah. going there, Yeah. other friends, Yep. 20 years from now, he's 35, Yep. and he's somebody relevant, like heavy duty dude in the game, Yeah. whether it be Puma, who DC, knows? you know, yeah, whatever. Who knows? It was just cool that we had so many cool people there. Yep. I think of anyone, you can get them together. Yeah, I would love to, yo. That's my thing is like, I love curating the homies, you know? So yeah. it's, it's fun, it's fun. Okay, I got a random question for you. <laughs> I've been dying to ask people this, right? Okay, so what's the latest you've ever been to a lunch? What do you mean? Like, like just arriving to a lunch meeting. Like, have you ever been super fucking late? I think at the latest, I'm like, a minute or like, yeah. Okay, so rarely ever late. Um, yeah. What was the most awkward lunch you ever had in your life? Where you almost just wanted to get up and leave, yo. You're like, yo, this is too much, I can't handle it, but you, you stood there. Second time meeting Michael Jackson. Okay. Uh, we're sitting at a table a little bigger than this. What year is this? 2008, it was a year before he died. Made Damn. all the joy, you made all the joy for him for the, for the last year of his life. Fuck. And I'm with this manager, this guy named Tomei Tomei, who's like, Tony Soprano, no jokes, anything. Yeah. Very, very, very threatening. Uh huh. Table a little bigger than this, circular. Mike's here, manager's here. So we start talking about this piece. Yeah. I'm like, do you want to start with the belt buckle first? Or do you want to start with the brooch first? And, I, and, he, and he looks <laughs> at me to answer me and he goes, yeah. Can you tell him that I think that we're gonna start with the brooch first, whatever boat. So he kept talking to me in third person, wouldn't talk oh, to me. Oh, I love that. Bit. I love that. That continued for like 35 minutes. He had a plate of food in front of him, didn't touch any of it. What was his order? Dude, he had a croissant yeah. and Nutella. Damn, the croissant and like Nutella. Whatever. Every time we end up sitting down, never got to the house, yeah. always at this little, little cafe in Brentwood, Michael Jackson memories, dude, 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 dude. that's crazy. Finally, I get to his house. We're talking. He gets the piece. What was, it, what, what was the piece of? I made him a brooch, you know, yeah. like a brooch, uh -huh. like a 50 carat brooch Fuck. of his MJ crest. Oh, sick. Then I, I'm sorry, that was like 30 carats. I made a 50 carat butt buckle with the MJ and the crest, with the unicorns and shit and everything, Dope. rubies, made it in blue diamonds. The crazy thing was, we're talking, and he's like, yeah, so I'm looking for this 47 carat blue diamond. It's really rare, maybe you can find it, you know, blah, blah. He showed me his pictures and things, hand me the picture, and he goes, yeah, let me know if you could find that. And he leaves. 20 minutes goes by, and I'm like, all right, you know, cool, whatever. I'm like, I'm like, shit, man, this is fucking weird, you know? Yeah. 30 minutes goes by. Yeah. And I have no service on my phone, by the way. Yeah. So I'm like, all right, cool. 45 minutes goes by. So I'm like sitting there now, and I'm like, yo, dude, there's no noises anywhere. I start opening doors. <laughs> Open the wrong door. And I run into the chef of the house. I was like, you seen MJ? And he goes, no, nah, MJ's here. Like, You're like, fuck, Christ, I'm out of here, yo. <laughs> Dude, he left, bro, yeah, he just yeah. bounced on me. In That's his own crazy. crib. Left you at the crib. The crazy part was, I never saw him again and he died. What, uh, fuck, dude, that's crazy. It was nuts, dude. That's actually crazy. Yeah, so that was the most awkward lunch. So there you go, wow. Ben Baller's most awkward lunch with Michael Jackson. I've been a sneakerhead since forever. Yeah. He told me 
when he was teaching Jordan how to dance, the 94 Chicago ones that had just been brought yep. back out. And he just loved the shoe, you know, it was such like a, I don't mean, remember, there wasn't very many choices back then. No, crazy no, shit. you were limited, yo, you were yeah. limited. No, he liked Jordan 1s. Dude, that's sick. But I remember, I'm just saying, but yeah. imagine like, could you imagine if you like just came across and it was documented? Michael Jordan, NDS, Jordan 1 Chicago, 1994 retro. I'm almost willing to think they might have altered some things on it for him. I, I'm 100% that's what I'm thinking, dude. Like, I'm just, my mind's actually going crazy about his sneaker collection right now. I'm just I don't thinking know what's, what yeah. could be in there, dude. Because he's like, always wearing loafers and random shit. Imagine what Michael Jordan would have been like, yo, do this one for Michael Jackson. Fool taught me how to dance. The man who did the moonwalk, like what was on his feet I could still talk, in his you know, own time, you know? His like, nephew, Siggy. Man. He's Jackie Jackson's son. Yeah. Jackie's the oldest brother of Jackson 5. And I need to call one person to make sure that Siggy's number's not changed and then hit Siggy. And I'm just really curious about it now. I'm I never thought about it again. I'm curious, man. I'm like always dead wear ass curious. There's gotta be like a soul change they did on the How soles of them or something. Like He might have had 2,000 pairs. He may he have. He had so many pairs of shoes in his house, so who Dude, knows? Dude, he could have 1,000 pairs of 85 ones. We don't know. True. You know? Man, I love that. Yo, so, okay. Just on the lunch theme, what's your preferred lunch order? What's like the Ben Baller, like your dream fantasy lunch that you're like, if I could have this every time, perfect, it's the shit. So there's a braised rib in Korea. Okay. In Korean food, it's called kalbi chim. Okay. I'm sure you know what kalbi is. It's like the Korean, you know, mm -hmm. short rib. This is a different level. There's a place in Korea that has it. Line out the door. They give you a pot of white rice, sticky rice, boom. Mm -hmm. They use gaktigi, which is the, rad the kimchi radish. Okay. Love radish. Another lunch would probably be like, you know, it's a toss up between the crab melt or lobster melt sandwich at the Rotunda in San Francisco. Okay. Which I had Yeezy go, I was like, yo, Kanye, you gotta go to the spot. Really? Yeah. <laughs> or my little hole in the wall spot being well for, for almost 40 years, uh, Mario's. Okay. Peruvian, right there on Melrose yeah, and, and yeah. Vine. Uh, and get a Lomo Saltado. Okay. Yo, one more thing. It's whatever, but I got this for you. First off, as a sorry for being late, but yeah. second off, because you gave me some fly ash shirt. By the way, like the gold dominoes, crazy. Okay, those shits are nuts. But here's our uh, most recent late lunch items that we're working on. Nice. Everything's very dinosaur themed. Very. Uh, and you know my kids love dinosaurs. Do they love dinosaurs? They know every oh, single thing say about no more, it. Dude. They know everything about dinosaurs. We gotta do some kids dinosaurs. They know stuff every for them single. Then, they know all the species. They, they know everything. Yo, Nash is the same. That's the reason why I do dinosaur stuff because yeah. he has pushed dinosaurs so much on me that I'm like, yo, I love them with you, Nash. Like, like peep the dino on the back of this one on top. So yeah, this is our new set. We, get, we got the blanket out this time. Oh, sick, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is great, I'll use this for the RV trip this weekend. Boom! Love that. Perfect, Hopefully thank I'll be you seeing so the much, same man. thing in the future. Thank, thank you. you. Man, man what? Nah, thanks, yo. Thanks for the dominoes and the top stuff. The top's yeah. chrome is crazy. Oh, bro, it's nuts. I hope you put, pull some what? crazy shit out of there. I'm gonna pull some wild shit. <laughs> Live pools, yo. Anyways, dope, thanks for, thanks for joining me on lunch, yo. Thank you, man.